Hello, welcome to day 22 of 100 days, 100 videos, 200 questions. Um, I have a little bit of a bone to pick to start with YouTube. Um, my day 20, I think it's day 20, like refuses to upload. And so it makes me look like I missed the day and I did not. I did day 20. It exists. I don't remember what it's about at this point, but it is there. And eventually I'll get it up there because I'm recording these videos. It's not like something I'm doing live that I would have to do 100% over again. But it's annoying, right? It's annoying that they're not going to be in order anymore because day 21 came before day 19 or day 20 because they're having issues with um, uploading. So that's frustrating. But we persevere. So this is day 22. And I don't have a whole lot of time today. Like I said, I don't want this to take up a whole bunch of my day, but I just, you know, it's just practice for me. Practice getting in the video, getting in camera, putting it out in the inner world, and moving on. So it's just one of these. Okay. We will go with this one. This one is the winner. So our first question of day 22 is... What does a confident mindset mean to you and how do you cultivate it? So we're finally getting into some of the nitty gritty. I feel like we've spent so many days doing sort of like what I would call fluff questions um, and maybe background and just sort of like fun, but not to say this isn't a fun question, but it is definitely something that's more maybe valuable. So a confident mindset, what does that mean to me and how do you cultivate it? Oh, I forgot to show it. So to me, a confident mindset means that you are intentional in what you're doing. So I don't see, I, I hesitated because I, first of all, I didn't want to give a synonym for confident. <laughs> I felt like that's a little bit cheap. And secondly, I didn't, I was thinking of saying, um, oh gosh, now I lost my train of thought. I was thinking of saying something that is comfortable, but that's not the case. I don't think confidence requires you to be comfortable. In fact, I think if you're just starting out and you want to become more confident, you're going to have to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. And recognizing that confidence is a muscle that you must use and you must work on in order to build it up to a state of being comfortable. Someone who has never been to the gym before is not going to go in and do 40 pull-ups or do, or do a whole set of lifting heavy weights the same as someone who's been doing it every day for 10 years. Like It just doesn't work that way. So you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable to be confident. So it definitely needs to be something that is intentional and something to have a confident mindset. It takes practice. It's not something that happens right away. And sometimes it might feel a little bit fake because the idea is that you get your mind in a place where it becomes practice. It becomes subconscious thinking versus conscious thinking. So at the beginning, it doesn't feel super realistic even. It feels like this is kind of crap. And you have to just keep reminding yourself until it feels more and more true that this is something that you do. I am confident. I do this until it feels like it is. And so practice is really the biggest thing to cultivate it. And I'm just going to say straight off the bat, like I am not a gratitude affirmations person. Like I am not trying to knock it. If that's something that really works for people, fantastic. You have to do what works for you. But for me, I always had sort of an issue with the authenticity of gratitude and affirmations. Gratitude mainly because I don't have a problem with not with taking things for granted. I I sincerely feel gratitude for things. Um, and affirmations, it, they feel kind of fake. And so that's something that I'm currently working on to see if I can find a way to make them feel less fake. And the only thing you can do is take 
time, right? And just continue to do it. But you, I think maybe it's the term affirmations that doesn't work for me. For me, I need reminders of previous successes. So if you're anything like me and you want to feel confident, you have to think back to a time when you felt confidence and try and replicate that emotion. So there have been times and it doesn't mean, I don't know why my under eyes are so shiny. Um, it doesn't mean that it has to be a situation that is 100% identical to the situation you're trying to inspire confidence for. That's not realistic. A, that doesn't exist. And B, it's not how confidence works. <laughs> um, it could be something in your home life. It could be something as a parent or as a sister or brother or as a spouse that you felt super confident, whether it's giving advice, speaking to a large group or a small group, um, just dancing around. It doesn't matter. It's the, the point is that you take that feeling and you replicate it in the situation you're in because you remind yourself that, yes, you are capable of feeling confident. You are capable of being in that zone where you believe in yourself and you replicate it. And it's not something that's perfect or a one-time solution, like a one-time switch. It's something that requires work and it's something that requires kind of like afterthought where after that moment has passed, you see, okay, I know I feel 100% confident. I feel 90% confident in this situation. Now I just did this one and when I'm comparing the two, I felt 60% confident. What can I do next time to bring that up to 70% confidence. You know, like it requires, uh, like a, a, give yourself a little bit of a review, right? And work on it. That's the biggest thing. The biggest thing is confidence is a muscle and you have to work on it. It's not something that you can just buy. <laughs> you can't have a trainer though. You can have confidence trainers the same way you'd have physical fitness trainers, the same way you'd have like mental health, like not, not trainers, but you know, help um speaking coaches like they it exists if you want to if you want a sort of a, a cheat code then you maybe you need a confidence trainer and i would love to help you with that um yeah so let's move on let's go to our question um give me a question Noise going on out there about a question that is a little. Let's do a little heavy today. Let's see what we get when we ask for a little heavy question. I feel like we need something with a little bit of weight to it. Okay. How do you find meaning or purpose in life during times of uncertainty or hardship? And can you share a personal experience where you had to do just that? Okay. So. So, first of all, I find meaning or purpose in life during times of uncertainty and hardship in two ways. And it's one, as I look forward, um, I imagine that this is not a permanent position for me. So, if you are feeling in times of hardship or strife or uncertainty, remind yourself that this is not your permanent position. And I know that's the, that's the hard part is when you get into a place where life is not working the way you want it to, it is very easy to fall into the hole of like, this is what my life is now and there's no hope, there's no way to get out of it and that's not the case. So you have to look forward and think, this is temporary, it sucks, but it's temporary. And then look back and think, when was I not in this position before to remind yourself that this isn't your life and that's hard. And sometimes you have to think about it during the good times. You have to think about it during the good times to remind yourself during the bad times because there will be both. And if you have trouble with that, it's normal. Sorry, I want to look up 
this one of my favorite quotations. So I want to see if I can find it. I'm not being able to find it. Um, okay, here it is. I found it. And it's, may the flowers remind us why the rain was so necessary. So what that means to me is the rain is necessary, meaning like the hardship, the uncertainty, the bad times. That's the rain. And then the flowers there remind us that we needed that rain to get to this good place. So I recommend that you remind yourself of the same thing, that this rain is preparing you for flowers. And you have to hold on to that feeling, even when it's hard, and just put it in places to remind you when you can't remind yourself that this rain is necessary and its, it's, it's purpose is to bring flowers. Because it's sort of like the position of when you live at neutral, sorry, my three-year-old to my nails. When you live at neutral, you do not experience extreme pain, but you also don't experience extreme joy. And if you have never experienced pain, you can't appreciate the joy, right? So as much as we hate and find uncomfortable and find painful, these experiences, these negative experiences, they help amplify the good, the joyful experiences. So they are necessary and they do serve a purpose. It's just hard to remember that in the time. And so a personal experience where I had to do just that. So <clears throat> I, I think I've said this before and I'll say this probably again, that for me, it's always seems to be finance based. And in that regard, I'm very grateful for it because I know a lot of people's times of uncertainty and hardship are for other more complicated reasons. And finance is, it's, it's not, a, it's, it's emotional, but like it's not emotional, right? Like it could be the course of like losing someone close to me or, um, the end of a relationship or something like like that that feels to me much more complicated much more emotional and much much harder uh, but for me a lot of mine are financial based that it's it's losing a job or it's um having an unexpected expense like things like that that kind of throw me off and put me into times of hardship or uncertainty and if i'm being honest like right now I always find at the end of the year, I feel that kind of way. So right now it's December 8th and I am feeling like I'm in a place of hardship and uncertainty because that's just the way that A, the the freelancing and copywriting world kind of works and because there's not a lot going on in December, the, the, the algorithms and whatnot get weird. Um, and B, I just find that my motivation starts to, to drag at the end of the year. Um, and so it puts me to this place where like expenses are high because Christmas and um, just winter gear and I have two kids that grow like little weeds. Um, expenses are high and income is just it's, it's never <laughs> it's never peaking for me in December. So I do feel like in that kind of place. And for me, it's like I said, it's about reminding myself of the times of flowers. So I have on my board like a, a, or on my computer taped to the screen is a grid of everything that I've made for this year and last year and next year I will probably just include it and do 2022, 2023, and 2024 to remind me that like this is normal and you'll get through it. Um, just hold tight. <laughs> and, and then I just have to do a little bit of work. As long as I'm keeping it in my mind, like there are, there are always things you can do to improve your your situation, whether it be just kind of like ma creating main character energy is something that one of my mentors has been saying a lot. Um, playing music that pumps you up or adding a little something to a treat that you're eating, you know, like putting sprinkles on it, putting 
edible flowers is her big thing or you know like a touch of cinnamon um something that just makes it feel more elevated can help sort of break you out of the funk take a bath go for a walk um require your entire family to do a 15 minute dance party to christmas songs like we do that a lot and that kind of thing can really just change your mood and it helps bring a little bit of clarity on what matters and how you can go about increasing more of what matters but yeah i feel you something about like i definitely have some sort of like seasonal affective disorder when it comes to December. My my motivation goes down, my mood goes down, it's cold and gross outside, and I'm just tired all the time. So if that's what you're feeling, you are not alone. It is not something that escapes at any level of success, I don't believe. Um, you just gotta power through it to, a, to an extent. I don't know if that was helpful, but it was honest. Um, so this, it's kind of ending a little bit of a downer, but just know that I'm here always to answer questions, um, to provide and inspire motivation if needed. And I really appreciate you watching this video all the way through all 16 minutes of it. Hopefully you put it on two times speed and got more of your day back, but I really do appreciate it. Anyone who happens to stumble upon this video, because like I said, I don't advertise. So thank you so much. Um, as always, the must need thing to end, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow for day 23. It's a weekend, so it'll probably be late at night. We'll see. Bye.